everybody. Welcome to episode number 99 of the Driftless Knitting Podcast. My name is Jennifer. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Driftless Knitter. And I'm so happy to be filming today. Um, it is Friday, August 21st. It is about 1.30 in the afternoon. Um, I was going to film earlier, but I had to get a little bit of work done and um, then I ate lunch and then just, well, not just as I was about to record, but I was like thinking about, you know, getting things set up and ready. Um, I saw that Adela of Lola Bean Yarn Company was going live on Instagram and I hardly ever get to catch her live videos. Most of the time they're at like night, like around eight o'clock central time. And I'm usually hanging out with my husband or, you know, just getting stuff done towards the end of the day and I usually don't tune in. So I thought, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm going to watch a little bit. And it was actually really fun because we sent, um, Knit Circus sent her a package of some, some yarn she ordered and then some surprise yarn that we um, had that my, my boss bug um, who's good friends with her, thought that she would like. And so it was really fun to watch her open that. So I'm glad I tuned in. Um, but yeah, I am, like I said, I did a little bit of work earlier today. And then I'm going in to Knit Circus later on this afternoon, probably right when I finish filming, um, to do some things for the Fiber World 2020 Virtual Fiber Festival, which is going on right now. Um, it started Wednesday night and it goes until Sunday night. Um, Knit Circus has a booth. There is classes and um, presenters and demonstrations and all sorts of things um, that is available for an entry ticket of about $15. You get access to all sorts of things. Um, we are, every day we're releasing new products, so new samples. New yarn colorways. Today we released two new yarn colorways, but we're not telling the rest of the public about it until tomorrow. Um, we also have show specials every day, so there's like sales and things like that. And most of the other vendors, it's the same. Um, there's like 80 vendors or something. So there's still time to join. You can go to fiberworld2020.com and get a ticket and um, join us this weekend for it. So it's really exciting. But anyway, I'm working all weekend for it, pretty much all day, Saturday and Sunday. We're gonna be going, or we're gonna be available live on our booth. So it's like a Zoom call. You, um, everyone has the same password to get into all the booths um, and that's given to you when you buy your ticket. And then um, you can request to join a booth. So we'll be like, it'll say that we're available and you can request to join us and then talk to us live, which is really, really fun. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing that pretty much all day tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. So this week has been kind of weird. I've taken like the mornings off and just worked the afternoons. I took pretty much all of Wednesday off because my hours, I'm just gonna be working way too many hours then. So anyway, <laughs> it's just been an odd week. Um, figuring out like when I'm working and when I'm not. So today has been a really nice slow morning and I got some knitting done. I got a little bit of work done and then I really wanted to film a podcast. It's been three weeks since I filmed my last episode and just really wanted to sneak an episode in because we are getting very, very close to my due date. For those of you who don't know, I am expecting my first baby. Uh, my husband and I are expecting a son. My due date is September 10th, um, so we're about three weeks away. And honestly, he could probably, I mean, I'm not feeling anything yet, but he could come any day. <laughs> so I wanted to get a podcast episode in. Who knows if this might be the last one. Maybe I can get another one in. If I do a lot of knitting this week, maybe next weekend while I'm just like sitting around at home, because I'm trying not to go anywhere now besides like into work. I don't want to be too far away from the hospital. I'm not going to be going to my in-laws anymore or to, you know, my, my parents' house or my sister's, which are really the only three places I've been going for the last six months because of the pandemic. <laughs> so it's not like I'd be going anywhere 
else, but um, just gonna be staying home from now on and you never know, I might, I might just be knitting and stitching up a storm and just wanna record again. So I don't know, get my hundredth episode in before the baby comes. Um, cause who knows after that, how much time we'll have. And it, apologies for my, um, somewhat like casual wear today. This is just kind of an oversized maternity, t maternity t-shirt. It's a little bit wrinkly, but, um, it's comfortable and it's cool. So, oh, and my air conditioning just kicked on. I'm wondering if that's going to be a distraction. Apologies if the audio just got really bad. Hopefully that won't. It's kind of warm today, so I'm like, I don't really want to turn it off, <laughs> but uh, it might be a little, a little loud. Anyway, um, yeah, things have been going good here. We're getting ready for the baby to come. And uh, last weekend we spent some time at my in-laws. We finally got to kind of be around my sister-in-law and her two girls to celebrate Seaver's birthday. That was a lot of fun. And other than that, we've just been We've just been here at home. So same old, same old pretty much. Um, I do have some projects to show you though. I've got my Cozy Memories blanket behind me. Um, that's kind of now my new backdrop. And But I have not done any work on that since the last time I showed it. I was on such a great roll. I was doing at least like two to three squares a week or like per podcast episode. So every like two weeks. Um, and then the last few weeks I've been, I wouldn't say I've been distracted, but I've just been kind of focused on other things and sort of forgot about my cozy memory blanket. Um, but this is such a fun knit. Um, when I do, when I do think about it, I, I can hardly resist knitting on it because it's just so much fun. So, um, definitely going to get back to that hopefully soon, but that might be a good one to kind of like small little doses of project to work on um, when the when the baby's here. So who knows? Who knows how much knitting time I'll have? I'm gonna really really try and still keep it to being like a you know priority when I'm feeling up up to it, up for it. Um, grab my knitting, and I don't know. Maybe that's just me being optimistic that I'll have some knitting time. But um, anyway, let's jump right into uh, some content. Okay, so I guess we can start with some finished objects. I do have a couple finished objects today. Um, one of them, I can't remember if I was, I don't think I was done with this the last time I podcasted. You know, I think I am going to shut off the air conditioning. Hang on one second. Okay, so it might get a little warm in here, but it shouldn't it shouldn't be too bad. It's not super hot today. It's in the 80s, I think. But um anyway, I don't think I had finished knitting this. If I think I was close. But honestly, 3 weeks ago, I can't remember. <laughs> but this is the Elevensies cardigan by um, Froggenet Designs. I can't remember her name, but she's Froggenet on Instagram and Ravelry. Um, and it's a cute little old man sweater that's kind of based on like Lord of the Rings. Um, she has a whole collection of them that kind of have like Lord of the Rings Hobbit themed names. So this is, like I said, the Elevensies cardigan. I, I definitely wasn't finished with this because I remember talking about the yarn and showing the the ball of yarn, but I really, really enjoyed knitting this. It went really fast. Um, it's done in worsted weight. I knit mine out of uh, Broco Ultra Wool, the original worsted weight Ultra Wool. They now have like chunky worsted DK and fingering weight. Um, of the ultra wool, which is a super wash um, wool yarn. Um, it's not merino. It's it d doesn't really specify what br uh, breed it is. It's probably a mix of breeds, um, but it's one of my favorite yarns to work with. I 
Really love the feel of it. I love working with it. It's not, it doesn't feel acrylic-y um, or like, it doesn't have that like plasticky feel that sometimes superwash yarns can, can get. Um, I'm thinking about like Cascade 220 Superwash or even Rowan, the, their Superwash Worsted can sometimes feel like, you can almost tell that it's been messed with. Oh my gosh, my shirt is so wrinkly, sorry. <laughs> Not, I'm not very professional today. <laughs> oh goodness, I could have changed, but I decided not to. Anyway, um, so yeah, this is like my favorite superwash wool yarn. It's a little more like wooly than Cascade, I would say, but I really like that aspect of it. I think it's still soft. I could wear it against my skin, no problem. Um, some people who are a little bit more sensitive maybe, would have maybe some issues. I do think that I knit, I knit my nephew a sweater out of this. Actually, I think the same, this, oh no, it was the DK version or the fingering weight version of Ultra Wool and he has a little bit of an issue with it. He just gets kind of, I don't know, he gets a little itchy, just a little uncomfortable, I guess. I don't know if my sister put a shirt underneath. I would definitely recommend putting like a t-shirt underneath or, you know, when, when my little guy is wearing this, which as you can see is not going to be right away. Um, definitely putting like a white t-shirt um, underneath to kind of help those really sensitive areas because, you know, I mean, I don't know, our, our chest area, our neck, our kind of shoulders, um, might be a little bit more sensitive, so just kind of covering that up. Um, arms, I think, I think it would be totally fine. But anyway, sizing wise, um, I knit the 12 month size, and while I don't know how large our son is going to be, <laughs> I think this kind of turned out more like 18 month size just after blocking. Um, which is fine because he will be born, you know, end of, well, anywhere from now until the middle of September. Um, so just getting into fall. So when he's a year old, he, it's, you know, it's going to be end of summer, early fall. And um, usually kids are kind of in like the larger size, you know, kind of a larger size than what their age is. At least that's been my experience with a lot of my friends' kids and my nephew. So um, if it's an 18 month size, that means that he'll be able to wear it like next fall and winter. Um, hopefully, you know, for longer and yeah. So this one will be set aside for a year, but that's okay. I was, I was already kind of planning on that. Um, I didn't show the little elbow patches those are super cute, done in that moss stitch, just like the pockets in the front. And then the buttons on there are buttons that I picked up at Joanne Fabrics. Um, they're like organic, organic wood. But I don't think they're bamboo. Um, and I can't remember the brand, but I think it's just their like in-house, like generic brand, um, nothing too fancy. So I bought a bunch of those because I really like the look of them and I only needed four of them for this sweater, which is kind of an odd number and they come in packets on packets of three. So I was like, I'm just going to have like one left or like one or two left over and that's not going to be enough for another project. So I bought like three cards of them. Hopefully I can use these buttons on another project too. I would put them on something for me as well. I think they're really just like a really great wood shape or a really great wood button with a good shape and a good color so it'll work for a lot of different things but um i can't remember the size of needle i think a us8 and maybe a us6 i did it with the needles that the pattern called for but i did not swatch so that might be why it turned out a little bit bigger but that's okay like i said i think it's gonna work out actually for the best so that was my first finished object. Um, I really, really enjoyed knitting that. I think I would consider knitting another one um, 
if I had yarn I really liked for it, I would even knit maybe like a, a little one for this winter. Um, that would be really cute. But I really wanted to use up that yarn. I had like two and a half skeins of it and um, I just kind of wanted to get it out of my stash. So the next thing I knit is this adorable little baby hat. Oh my goodness, we're on a theme. So I don't, again, I don't think I showed this. Don't think I even had this cast on last time. Um, I wanted, again, to use up some yarn from my stash. And this is the Homespun House um, Little House in the Big Woods speckle colorway from Molly's uh, Laura Ingalls Wilder clubs that she did earlier this year. And she's done three of them. She did Little House in the Big Woods, Little House on the Prairie, and then on the banks of Plum Creek. And then they moved, her and her family moved back to Germany. So her shop has been closed for um, the summer and early fall. I think she she's really hoping to open it up. I think she was hoping to open it up in August. I know she has a studio space now and they're like getting everything set up. Um, I subscribe to her Patreon account, so I watch um, the vlogs that they put up and um, her stories on Instagram, just kind of keeping updated. Um, so yeah, but anyway, I knit a flax light out of this for the baby um, earlier this spring, summer, um, and had some leftover. So I knit this, I did the measurements based on the barley hat light, which is also by Tin Can Knit, so is the Flax Light. Sorry, I didn't say that. Um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, because the Barley Hat originally was done in a worsted weight, pretty sure. Um, and then they did, they put one out that was done with fingering weight. So I took the cast on number for the baby size and that's a free pattern, so you can, yeah. I didn't really feel bad to, I mean, I'm not like, not that I took the numbers from it, but um, yeah. Anyway, I took the cast on number from it, but I didn't do, they call for like a panel of garter stitch going up the hat. I did not do that. So I just knit it in stockinette. Excuse me. <laughs> and um, did the decrease rounds as called for. I did not block this. I don't really think I need to, um, unless I wanted to just like wash it, which isn't a bad idea. But yeah, my original thought was to take a lightweight hat with us to the hospital because I have a DK weight hat that I think might be too heavy for this time of year. Um, but this might seem, this seems a little big. I don't know. So we'll see. I might just put it in the bag just in case. They always tell you to bring like a couple of different sizes of things because you don't know how big he's going to be. Oh, a hummingbird is drinking out of our, um, we have some hanging baskets on our balcony. And I've seen him a couple of times, but oh, it's, it's just so cool when you see them. And they're, um, I forget what type of flowers those are, but they look like bells. They're very common. Um, and he was just sticking his little, his little beak in there. Okay, anyway, so yeah, that's the, the barley light, the non-barley, barley light. Um, <laughs> and I have a little bit of yarn. Actually, I have it in my, because I grabbed my cozy memory blanket out of this bag, but this is how much yarn I have left still. So definitely enough to do a square in my blanket and then um, maybe pass on to my friend Amanda whose mom is working on a crochet granny stripe blanket because I don't crochet and I don't really want to start another scrappy project. So I'm like, here, have the scraps of my scraps. <laughs> I don't need them. <laughs> oh goodness. So that is, te technically it's not all of my finished projects, but it's all of my knitted finished projects. Projects, products, FOs. You know what I mean? 
Um, I am going to talk about some stitching, some cross stitching that I'm doing, but I'll wait until after I'm done with all the knitting first and then we'll go into cross stitching just in case you really don't care about cross stitch. So works in progress. This week, for a while now, I feel like I haven't been knitting that much. I don't know why. It's not that I'm not necessarily motivated. I don't know. It's like other, well, I mean, that makes sense. Other things are kind of occupying my brain, but um, yeah, it just seems like there hasn't been a, a lot of time for me to just like sit and like crank stuff out and just knit. Um, I get a little bit of time here and there and I'll, you know, try and get a few rows done. And that only, only gets me so far. But um, I did, you know, after I finished this, I, I can't remember what I was working on after that. Did I start? I almost feel like there's a project I'm forgetting about, but I really don't think so. Um, yeah, so the sweater and the hat got done. I cast on the hat after the sweater. And then after the hat was done, I think I was working on this a little bit over the this last weekend. Um, these are, I think I showed the very beginning of this. These are some tube socks that I knit for the baby. All of this is baby projects. I'm so sorry for those of you who are like, oh my God, stop with the baby things already. I just feel like I need to stock up while he's not here. And then it's almost like he's my deadline. And once he's here, like I can't knit for him anymore. I don't know why that's in my brain. Like, obviously that's not true, <laughs> but um, I just feel like I need to have as much as possible ready and waiting. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. So anyway, I got a suggestion from a viewer, I forget who it was, that mentioned my last pair of socks. I was trying to get like a larger pair for when he's not quite a newborn anymore. Um, and how I was kind of guessing with the sizing, where to put the heel, all that stuff. And she messaged, she's like, why don't you just do tube socks? They'll fit him longer, you know, you'll get more use out of them. And I'm like, you're a very smart lady. So I, the only thing about tube socks is that I don't think they stay on quite as well as like socks with a heel flap or socks with a like designated heel. Babies have trouble keeping socks on anyway. <laughs> so I'm like, the, ooh, these might fall off, whatever. But, um, you know, if they do, oh, well, I just won't put them on him if we're like going somewhere, um, if I'm afraid of losing them if he can get them off pretty easily. So these might just be home home socks. But anyway, so I just knit a tube. I cast on um, eight on each needle for Judy's magic cast on. I did these toe up and I increased until there was, I believe 32 stitches total. Um, or 36, I think it was 36 actually which is the cast on that um, a pattern recommends for like a three month sock was 36. So I just increased till I got that. And then I knit the tube and knit a two by two rib at the top and did a super stretchy bind off. Not sure which one this is actually, but it's the knit two knit two stitches and then knit them together through the back loop. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I had to pause it really quick, but I'm back. Um, I can't remember what I was saying. I think something about the stretchy bind off that I used. Um, it was the like knit two stitches, knit them together through the back loop, knit one more, knit those two together through the back loop. So you get like extra fabric, extra knitting. Um, yeah, so that is the finished one. And then I did start the second one. And again, doing it uh, with the Judy's Magic cast on, increasing to 36, knitting it Magic Loop on a US 1 needle. 
And these are my Addy sock needles. They're my favorite sock knitting needles. I only have one pair and they're actually starting to tarnish slightly where my fingertips um, hold on to them. I've noticed that in the last like couple of months, um, they started getting a little yellow in those areas. So don't know if I can rub something on them to um, take that off. It's not like sticking or anything. It's not like they're just getting a little discolored. Like it's not affecting my knitting at all. So I guess I don't really mind. Um, it just goes to show you how much I, I use them. Um, the yarn I'm knitting those baby socks in is a one of a kind colorway by a homespun house. And I got this mini skein. It was just a mini skein. I bought this at the Madison Knitters Guild knit in several years ago. Um, when I want to say it was the first show that Molly vended at after moving to Wisconsin. Um, yeah, I think it was like the first spring that she was in Wisconsin. They were here for about like two or three years, two years, three years. Can't remember <laughs> how long they lived here. But um, so she was vending there and I went and visited her booth, picked up a couple things and that was one of them. It was just kind of a random mini skein. I liked the colors. And um, actually at the time I was thinking, we weren't planning on having kids like quite yet, but I was like, that this would make a pair of really cute little boy baby socks. I also bought one that's more um, girlish looking. And in my, yeah, in my head I was like, okay, if we have a girl, I can knit socks out of this. And if we have a boy. So anyway, um, when we did find out we were having a boy, I knew that at least one of the the pairs of socks I wanted to make was out of this colorway. And I will definitely have enough to do a square in my memory blanket and then, yeah, probably the same thing, send it off to other people to use up the remnants. Um, but this is in my Pointel Designs bag. Um, yeah, you guys have seen this bag pretty much every episode because I've been keeping all my, the baby socks I've been knitting since springtime, since I started knitting baby socks. They've all been in this bag. So yeah, kind of a fun tradition. But um, my second work in progress, let me just sort of stick it back in here so I can show you the, give you the full effect. I was knitting on this just before I started recording, so it's kind of a hot mess. But uh, this is in my one of my Daisy Girl bags. I think this might be my only Daisy Girl bag, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> um, but I love that subtle farm fabric. It's kind of like more girly farm, but really, really, really like that. And it's one of her peekaboo bags. It's got the nice arm strap, wrist strap, and the window kind of signature for Daisy Girl. And yeah, this bag has a lot of space. I am definitely not even using up all of it because this is just a one skein project. This is the Nick and Nora sweater by Knit Moxie, I think. This is a test knit. I am allowed to show it because she's already put up pictures on her Instagram and the project page is technically already up on Ravelry, but like the pattern's not uplo uploaded yet. So um, this is a sweater that's done flat. Um, you cast on the collar and you kind of do this rollover coll collar. It's connected, it's a ribbing, and then you fold it over and you knit them together. So it's Got this really nice finished edge. And then this is the front. And then I'm now working on the back. And it's just a really cute sort of boxy um, t-shirt or you can knit long sleeve. I think the original was a t-shirt. She has photos, I think of her son um, in it and it's really, really cute as a t-shirt. I haven't made up my mind yet if I'm gonna do short sleeves or long sleeves. I might just do long sleeves because this is the three to six month size. And by the time our baby 
fits into it, it's going to be winter. So I just feel like he might, I could always put like a shirt underneath or it could just be an inside thing, you know, but at the same time, I don't know, I kind of want to just make sure that he gets the use out of it. So I might knit the long sleeve. Um, but I have to finish the back and then um, I think you seam the sides and then you pick up for the sleeves and you knit the sleeves out. So yeah, so I guess it also depends on how much time I have left. <laughs> Maybe I'll just knit the short sleeves because I'm running out of time. But um, I think our test knit, oh, why is that? Oh, that's right, because it's going this way. Um, I think she wanted to release the pattern on the 26th, 28th? Maybe next Friday, is that the 28th? Yeah, it is, maybe it's the 28th. So I have a week, I might be able to get it done. Like with the long sleeves and everything. I'll definitely be able to get it done with the short sleeves. I just did the short rows and the back this morning in like, not in an hour maybe. You do short rows kind of along the shoulders and then you knit down. You do a little bit of decreasing. You can kind of see that where that stitch marker is clipped on the front. You do a little bit of decreasing, but not much. Um, but yeah, the shoulders are really cool the way that you do them. And the short rows are really slick. I was kind of wondering how it was like, why there was, or not why there were short rows, because I know that helps with like shaping, but um, the way that you do these like shoulder pieces and then you do the short rows it was really interesting but it actually like turned out really nice and it like fills in the gap really nice so the collar is a little more shaped than it normally would be so yeah there's been a couple things where um you know it is a test knit so like just a couple notes about maybe wording or things like that but otherwise it's been really great and I've been enjoying knitting it. Um, I was gonna show you the Progress Keeper I have clipped to it. That is a Progress Keeper from Lock and Lou, who is a Madison area Progress Keeper maker. <laughs> progress Keeper maker. Um, I have several of hers. And this is the Chicory Flower, which is my favorite summer flower pretty much, even though they're considered weeds, I guess. They're the blue flowers that grow on the side of the road. I don't know if they're how prevalent they are in other areas of the country, but here in the Midwest, they grow along the side of like any road um, or path. They're these kind of like taller um, blue flowers. I mean, if you drive anywhere in this area, you will know what I'm talking about. They're the beautiful blue flowers that just line the roadsides. I love them. Um, yeah, so that's my chicory flower. I got this from Katie of Lock and Lou. It would have been two years ago, two Augusts ago, or one, was it just last August? Maybe it was just last August? Oh, my light went out, whoops. Um, I'm talking too much. At, um, oh my gosh, my brain. Um, <laughs> Stitches Midwest, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. Stitches Midwest, she was vending there um, and I bought it from her there. So anyway, she has a bunch of amazing things on her website as well. Um, I'm actually gonna show you one that I just ordered. But uh, first I should talk about the yarn that I'm knitting the Nick and Nora sweater out of. This is what the ball looks like. It's just really pretty greenish, like khaki green. I don't know how to describe that. Let's see if my light will stay on for just a little longer. Well, here we go. That's a pretty good representation. And it's a fingering weight and it is Neighborhood Fiber Company. There we go. And there goes the light again. We just won't worry about that anymore. And this is the Mountain Vernon colorway. I bought this a few years ago when I went to visit my best friend out in uh, DC. She works in DC 
lives in Virginia on the Virginia side. And um, we went to Alexandria, Virginia to um, visit Fiberspace. And at that time, Caitlin wasn't a big knitter. She kind of knew how to knit and knew how to crochet, but hadn't done it in a really long time. Um, and when we went to Fiberspace, she kind of got interested again. I'm, I'm gonna kind of credit myself with uh, inspiring her to start knitting again, because now she is a knitting fiend and she's knitting all sorts of amazing socks and fun things. She's kind of on a Christmas, she's knitting for Christmas already, which is really smart, um, but she's been showing me pictures of some of the yarn um, or some of the knitting that she's been doing. So yeah, when we went there, I got that skein of Neighborhood Fiber Company and then I got a skein of Miss Babs um, that I haven't used yet either. So it's kind of nice to get some deep stash not the deepest stash I have, let's be clear. Um, I have some really, really deep stash. Probably over 10, no, not over 10 years. Around 10 years, maybe. <laughs> um, and I know people probably have had yarn longer than that, but um, yeah, it is it is nice when you get to wind up a skein and use it for you know projects and um, have it fit the project pretty perfectly. So I think that'll make a really, really cute little sweater. So I do have a couple of things that have come in the mail. I've been pretty good, but I did, I think maybe I talked about ordering this last time, but I did order some yarn to make a, um, I can't remember what exactly the pattern is called, but it's a Susan B. Anthony, Susan B. Anderson, always do that. Susan. I her name is so close to Susan B. Anthony, which was a woman, a suffragist back in the 1800s. Anyway, um, Susan B. Anderson's um, puppy. I think it's the Waffles puppy. Waffles the puppy, I think. Super cute, little stuffy, little stuffed animal. Um, it's kind of this floppy dog. And I just fell in love with him when I saw him on their website and I knew I had to knit one for my for my little guy. So I did not order the yarn. They did theirs in Barrett Wool, which is Susan B. Anderson's company, so of course, but I knew that I could get a really good super wash wool. There's my favorite <laughs> for a good price. I actually ordered this from Webs, I think, which I hardly ever order from Webs, but they just had all the colors and it was just easy. And I know I probably should order from a local yarn shop. And they usually do from like smaller places. I don't necessarily like ordering from like the big web, like yarn places. Jimmy Beans is okay. Like I kind of know the people who own it it's still really big, but it's still kind of like, I don't know, it's not like, and I guess Webs is fine too, right? I mean, they have a warehouse, you can go there, it's supporting the yarn industry. Yeah, I mean, I always tend to lean towards LYSs and stuff like that, but I mean, we're all, we're all in this together, right? So <laughs> anyway, Ultra Wool Chunky. Um, this is the 43104 color, which is just a nice heathery brown. And I got two of them to do waffles. So I'm not going to cast this on right away, maybe soon, depending. Um, I think I'm going to knit that at least for a Christmas present for him. So I'm not, I don't need it to be ready like when he's born. Um, I think that'll be a Christmas present. It's kind of weird thinking about like, I'm gonna knit this Christmas present for my son, like who still isn't here yet. I don't know, it's, it's an odd, it's an odd feeling like knowing that he will be a part of our family for, you know, for all these holidays that are coming up. Um, 
And Christmas is really special for me. I love Christmas. You guys know that if you've watched any of my Vlogmas episodes, which I'm going to try and do again this year. I am going to try and do Vlogmas. Maybe not every day. Maybe I'll do like an every other day type of thing. But um, I really, really love vlogging. And I've actually toyed with the idea of doing Vlogtober because I'll be on maternity leave. But I don't know yet. Again, maybe not every day. That seems like a little much, especially with a new baby, but maybe every other. So anyway, um, yeah, I love Christmas and I love all the traditions that go around it. And just thinking about the fact that my baby son will be here and will be several months old and kind of able to not participate, but just like observe and kind of, you know, he's going to start kind of knowing, being aware of things going around him at that age. So I'm excited, <laughs> you know, like bright lights and bright colors, like he's gonna hopefully really enjoy that. I don't know how much a three month old can enjoy. Yeah, but <laughs> anyway, okay, all right. So anyway, that's gonna be for his Christmas present. I also picked up in a moment of weakness a couple weeks ago, I picked up a skein of our Knit Circus yarn, breathtaking BFL, yarn in the floating lanterns colorway it's a modernist colorway so it's going to almost be like striping and this is now a discontinued color unfortunately didn't sell very well um but i love the colors and we actually named it after this was my suggestion we named it after um tangled the movie about rapunzel the Disney movie. So in that movie, she wants to go see the floating lanterns. That's kind of her adventure. And then one thing leads to another and she discovers her true identity and the strength that lies within us all. <laughs> There's my pitch for Tangled. I love that movie so much. It's like my favorite Disney movie. And she's my Disney princess. Um, my cousin and my sister and I growing up, we all had or they had like their Disney princess that they identified with. So my cousin's Disney princess was Sleeping Beauty, Aurora. Um, and then my sister's was Belle because she loved to read. And yeah, um, she just really identified with Belle. And I never felt like I had one. Um, we were very much into Disney and very much into, I don't know, playing various games, you know, like that. And I, yeah, I never felt like I had a Disney princess until Tangled came out and Rapunzel is my, she is my Disney princess. <laughs> so Floating Lanterns, had to get that. Um, and I'll probably do, I don't know, I'll do a cowl or something. It's a fingering weight yarn, super wash, 100% blue face luster. Um, so yeah, we'll see. But I just had to grab a skein of it because it's so pretty. It's on one of my favorite bases from Knit Circus and it's gonna be gone. So those were my only yarn purchases. That's a lie. I did buy some yarn, but it's on, it's a pre-order. So I'll show that to you when it comes. Um, but I did grab another progress keeper from Lock and Lou. She did a update oh my gosh it's so teeny tiny and without the light okay let's just turn that on for a second okay can you guys see that it's not focusing anything anything oh my gosh come on now it's not gonna focus at all Okay, well, it's a book, and what you can't see on there is that it says Little Women, and it is very faint. You can't see it super well, probably even if it did focus, but it's beautiful. And I had to get, she did like a book, um, like book charms, and had a bunch of different really cool ones, um, and yeah, I saw Little Women on there, and I... I knew that one had to be mine. So I have been sort of like, it's been in the box since it came like a week or two ago. 
and I've just had it sort of like sitting on my desk like to look at and yeah there's part of me I love her little boxes they're just so cute um I have a little like baggie that I keep all my progress keepers in but I don't know I feel like I might need a I need a better way of storing them I'm getting a few I'm getting to have more so yeah but anyway so that's all of my acquisitions now let's talk about some stitching some cross stitching the bug has not left me you guys the bug has not left me I'm still kind of obsessed um I finished I finished the Halloween thing. So last time I think I was still on the cat. I don't think I've showed this since I, yeah, since I finished up the cat. Um, it's a very simple stitch. There isn't too much, I don't know, there isn't too much going on changing colors and stuff. Like the moon is all one color, the cat is all one color. The only thing, the pumpkins have like a little bit of like two different oranges so that they have a little bit of um, change in color. And then you do the writing all in one color. So very simple, a good way to get back into it. Um, it was a lot of fun, very relaxing. And yeah, I'm just really happy I finished that. I did change the borders on the bottom. They were supposed to be different. They're supposed to have this weird like zigzag back stitching, but I didn't actually like the look of that and I also didn't really feel like doing it. So I just copied the border from the top and did the same um, around the pumpkins. So I think it turned out really cute. I'm probably going to just make it into, I'm either going to put it in a really simple frame or I'm going to... Um, mounted on some mat board. I've been seeing some stitchers that do that a lot and then they're able to like put it on like a little cute box or um just a different way of displaying it. I don't think I'm gonna like make a pillow or anything. I don't have a sewing machine and I'm not really a sewist. Um I could ask my Oma to help me but I don't know I just feel like that's not really my thing. I also want to give this to my sister. That was the original plan at the beginning because she really loves fall and Halloween. I think it'd be really cute just to, and, and cats. <laughs> so maybe something for her desk or one of their end tables or something like that. Um, she can just have it sitting there. So um, yeah, so that's the Halloween. I finished that and then my promise to myself was that I was going to finish the Halloween before starting my next project, which is bigger. Um, I've been wanting, this is the reason why I kind of got back into it because I wanted to make this very, very badly. <laughs> um, and, but I wanted something to sort of like get my feet wet. Um, and that was like three years ago and I finally finished it, but I'm glad I did because this project apparently is more of an intermediate project, um, but it's going well so far. The, uh, I should say it's going well once I figured out what the hell I was doing. Excuse my language. <laughs> Let me explain. So <laughs> I started this a few days ago. I wound up all of the all of the thread onto bobbins over the weekend last weekend and when I got back home I don't I think I started it like maybe I did start it Monday I was really excited and this is the let me show you what I'm talking about this is autumn harvest girl isn't she just gorgeous so I was gifted this magazine with some floss and, you know, base, like I think a piece of Ada, which is what I did the Halloween kitty on um, from my Oma because I told her a few years ago that I was thinking about getting back into cross stitch. So she gifted me that and my little, um, my plastic thing with all, with, for my thread. Um, Cause I didn't have any cross stitch stuff anymore. I had kind of, 
gotten rid of it or is it was at my mom's because I used to do it as a kid but I hadn't really done it as an adult so um this magazine came with it just to kind of give me inspiration and I saw her and I loved her and I said that is what I'm gonna make so I started at the top there's like a heart um, at the top of the trellis with the flowers and started with that it called for um 28 count I got a 28 count even weave um, linen this is a DMC I just got it from Joanne Fabrics because I didn't want to order anything too expensive um, it's my first time working on anything that's not Ada which Ada cloth is like the stiff cotton that most in my mind, I think of when I think of cross stitch, I didn't know that there was other like fabrics you could cross stitch on. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a novice as we shall see. <laughs> um, so this is like a 14 count. So it's got like the bigger holes you can kind of see through where you do your crosses. Um, and the 28 count is like half of that. So it's however many like um, what is it like however many threads are in an inch or in like in, I don't know a certain amount of measurement so this this called for a 28 count and I'm looking at it and I'm like okay that's it's smaller like the holes are smaller the squares you know that you're creating are going to be a lot smaller so but I can do it I can do it right and I started it and I'm like this is taking forever. I can barely see what I'm doing. It's so small. How am I, I can't even see the cross. It just looks like I'm making, it looks more like embroidery. Um, I couldn't even see the cross of the cross stitch. And then I'm watching Floss Tubes, which are pretty much cross stitch podcasts. And they're talking about 36 count and 40 count. And I'm working on 28 and I can barely see what I'm doing. Like how? in the world are they doing this? So I looked up, I was just curious. I'm like, am I missing something? So I did a little bit of research and I did read in the pattern, it told me to stitch two over two and didn't really explain what two over two was. And people have talked about two over two or one over one or whatever. And they've never, explain. I'm assuming they just think that the people who are watching their floss tubes are already stitchers and already know what that means. Apparently I did not. <laughs> um, I thought it was that you're just using two threads, like two floss threads, and you're crossing them. So two over two. That's what I thought that meant. Come to find out. It actually means that you are creating your square across two threads of fabric. So you are not, so if you, I'm just gonna hold up. You can barely see it, but this is like woven so that there are little, like little tiny squares and you're, you're using up two of those threads in every like cross that you're doing. That probably doesn't make sense. I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, let me show you my first attempt, which I have tried to, I like mutilated this because I tried to get it out, cut it apart so I could start over, but look how tiny that is. That's all fuzzy because I tried cutting it's really, really hard to cut, <laughs> to cut out at that tiny of a, so I was just using, like I said, like one thread thing. It was tiny. It was small. I could not see what I was doing and it took forever. So after I figured this out, I went back and I, so I flipped my fabric over cause I don't want to waste this, this fabric. And I started again and I did this in one day. I did all of this yesterday. So this is what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> I 
And it still doesn't look like a lot, but I only, I did about maybe two hours worth of stitching last night. And you are like switching threads. Like you can see, I have different um, hues of the pink and you're kind of, you know, counting around. So it's not like, you, you have to pay attention to the chart and you have to look. So it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit fiddly. So it takes a little longer. Um, but technically, so I was reading in on that website that I found out that I, you know, where they actually explained what two over two meant. Um, so it's basically, I'm at the same gauge as the 14 count Ada because you have, so it's a 28 count, but I'm stitching it like a 14 count because I'm going over two threads instead of one. So 14 count, you only go over one, but then with the smaller even weave 28 count, I go over two but I'm still at a 14 count gauge. If that makes any sense. <laughs> oh goodness. So yeah, I when I realized what I had done, I was like, oh, of course. And that makes so much more sense why people can use even thinner, tighter fabric because you're not, you're not just using one hole for every, you know, cross you're going over a couple of them and <sighs> so that was adventures in cross stitching this week and I'm really glad I figured it out. I wish I hadn't have wasted that much time. I feel really dumb but at the same time like how was I supposed to know? I really didn't do much research. I, I cross stitched a little bit when I was younger and then I did this the Halloween on the Ada and it worked out fine and I don't know, a novice, but now I know, now I know. So yeah, I'm enjoying this. It was so much more pleasant to cross stitch this than it had been to cross stitch that tiny, tiny, oh my gosh, the tiny stitching and it's addicting. It is so addicting. I love it. So anyway, I got started on that. I'm really excited. I can't wait to work on it more. I'm going to probably do that tonight. I find that like I gravitate towards I gravitate towards stitching more at night and I don't know if that's because that's the rhythm I've gotten into or it's just like relaxing and it's slow so it kind of like calms me down. I don't know but I'm really enjoying it. So yay cross stitch! <laughs> I am so happy that I'm I'm still excited about it and still going strong and um, there are some charts that I really want to order but again I want to I want to get this done I want to make sure you know I'm still I'm still on I'm still loving it you know before I invest because there's there's a like a set that I really really want it's like Christmas themed I'm so excited. I really want it, but I'm, I'm doing my autumn girl first and then we'll go from there. So, okay. I think that's it. Um, hopefully this episode wasn't too long. I did have to pause it a couple of times, so I don't really know how long it was, but, um, thank you so much for watching. I am really excited. I got a chance to film and hopefully I, this won't be my last one. Hopefully I'll be able to film one more time. If I don't, that's because things either got really busy, I'm really, really tired, I didn't get anything done in the next couple weeks, or the baby's born. So, I don't know. Um, I don't think that, if the baby's not born, I don't think that I'm gonna, like, just totally stop crafting and doing stuff. Um, so, I'll, st I'll have things to show, but yeah, maybe I'll... I'll fit one more in before he gets here. I can't believe, oh my God, I can't believe it's almost time. It seems so crazy. This year has just been so crazy that it's gone slow and fast at the same time. It's so weird. Anyway, I'm sure you all have had kind of similar feelings about this year, but I mean, it's a great year for us because we're having our first baby. I mean, you know, it's a great year in that it like that's the upside. That's the bright side of it. It has been a really crappy year for a lot of other reasons. But 
we're not going to get into that right now. Um, anyway, I hope you all have had a fantastic week. I hope you all have a great weekend that you get a lot of crafting done. Um, knitting, crocheting, stitching, weaving, spinning, whatever it is you want to do to make you, yourself happy and to fulfill yourself, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Um, what else am I going to say? Oh yeah. Um, let's see here at the end. I'll just do a little PSA. Um, get your mail-in ballots um, because that's really important to vote. And if you aren't comfortable voting in person this November, if you live in the U.S., request your ballot now um, and do it. And cr contrary to what is being said from some channels, it is perfectly safe to mail or to vote using the mail. Um, also, while you're at it, send all of your friends and family a postcard or a letter or something. Buy a book of stamps. Do something to support your local post office because the post office is the thing that connects our world and our country. And I know that there are other ways of mailing things, um, but most often than not, the post office is the most accessible the cheapest, um, again, I'm going to say the most accessible for citizens to connect with family and friends, pay their bills, um, get their mail, get information from different places. Like we just need, we need a postal service. That's just all there is to it. Um, and ours is being, is being under, ours is under attack right now. Um, so yeah, I shipped out a couple of packages to some friends yesterday. I've been writing thank you notes from all of my baby showers that I've had virtual and otherwise. Um, I bought some extra stamps because I thought, why not? I'm, a, I'm gonna be able to use them. And it's a little bit of extra revenue maybe that, you know, we don't have much, but I can, I can do that. Um, <laughs> anyway, that is just, um, Something that's been on my mind lately because, yeah, we uh, we need to stand up for things that are, are worth saving and that make our lives, like, normal and good. Um, we need to be able to connect to the outside world and to each other and, yeah. So anyway, that's all I'm going to say. Um... Thank you all so much for watching. You're amazing. Um, next episode is 100, so maybe I'll have to do a giveaway. I haven't done a giveaway in a long time, but there, okay, there we go. I can send a package to somebody and use the post office. <laughs> um, <laughs> practice what I preach. And yeah, I appreciate each and every one of you, whether you are a longtime viewer or a new subscriber, thank you so much. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Also like the video if you would be so kind. Um, it just gets my video out there to more people. And um, yeah, and hopefully I will be back very soon. If not, thank you so much for being so supportive over this whole journey. I will be back eventually. I just don't know when, if the baby is born um, soon. Hopefully within a month, maybe, um, maybe sooner. Probably not all you mamas out there are probably like rolling your eyes and laughing at me because I probably think I'm going to have way more time than I am going to have. <laughs> I might just have bags under my eyes the next time I come on here, but um, anyway, <laughs> now I'm just rambling. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you all very, very soon. If I'm not podcasting, I will definitely still be on Instagram, so check out my Instagram account, which is Driftless Knitter, and I love you all. Have a great weekend. Bye.